What's up everyone? It's Jason Watts and I'm back again this week for another episode on Sizer. Last week I had about a 30 minute episode just going over the basic overview of Sizer. Sizer is a configuration tool put out by Siemens for Siemens drives and motors. And it is a massive tool and there's a ton of information in it. And I'm going to kind of build off of what I went through last week. And this week I want to talk about what Sizer can do to help you specify motors. So I'm going to kind of assume that you kind of know everything that's going on. Uh, so if you, this is the first time that you have ever used Sizer, you might want to go check out that other video and then come back because I'm going to kind of just take a, uh, assume that you, you know what you're doing anyway. So without further ado, I'm going to pull up a, um, pull up our Sizer here and I'm going to open a project and for what we're doing today which is just getting some information about about a motor you really just need a project in order to get to this information so I'm gonna open up the project that we did last week and I'm just going to go to our workflow and create a new axis and for this it kind of does make a little bit of a difference what type of line module you have selected here the active line module because it because it has uh, that boosting capability it gives a higher DC link voltage so normally what these motors are going to be seeing is going to be on a smart or basic line module so it's going to be around that that 620 640 volt uh, DC link depending on what your input input voltage is but previously we did third-party motors well today I want to go through and specify a 1 pH 8 motor I actually have a customer that that reached out and was asking just some information about over speeding a motor and running above a rated nameplate and one of the things about these 1 pH 8 motors is that they have a pretty high mechanical maximum speed they are rated kind of down around that 2000 rpm most of the time but they actually can go some of them can go up to 10 or 12000 rpm and so uh, sizer actually gives you gives you all of the the motor curves and and kind of the torque characteristics of these motors built into the tool so just create a new axis select the type of motor that you want and then just do a simple motor selection we'll eventually go over all of that other stuff later but for this we just want to look at a specific motor so when you click on specify that motor uh, it comes up with these two options you can either do a body order designation or a complete order designation I already have the full part number that we're just trying to look up motor information so I'm gonna click complete order designation and I'm going to just paste in the the motor that was given now you notice over here on the example and in mine it has the dashes so you need to actually put these dashes in otherwise it will not accept it so you click next and you kind of know that it it's in the right place because it, you only have one option so click next and here is kind of the the magic screen for motor data this is actually going through and saying hey how are you how are you actually going to use this motor because this is what sizer is going to use in order to size the drives well most of the time you're going to be just looking at the the nameplate rating on this and for this motor that nameplate is 2000 rpm and then this 2873 inch pounds uh, of torque now this inch pound rating here is based on that US NEMA rating that we that we set up earlier um, most of the time honestly I have this set up in Newton meters uh, just because uh, and then I swap back and forth like if I need if I need to but anyway those torque numbers are available so what I wanted to show you on this is this is the actual torque curve 
torque curve of this motor. So the maximum speed of this motor is 7,500 RPM. And if you look at if you look at this data, this torque curve goes all the way down. Now these two lines, the green line down on the bottom is the actual torque curve. And then the blue line is the voltage limiting characteristic, so the maximum, um, the maximum torque available from this motor. So this green line is what is called S1 characteristic. So that's an S1 duty cycle. So if it is on or under this curve, this motor will not overheat. It is rated for continuous duty. Now, obviously, the speed at the nameplate or the base speed, depending on, on your terms, is going to be 2000 RPM. And that's, that's what your default nameplate or default operating point is. There's two things that you can do, or actually a couple of things that you can do, um, is you can move the operating point. And unfortunately, you can only move it down below just to see what the current is going to be at your different um, at, at your different speeds um, and so you can do this and reduce it by 50 percent say you're only going to run it as, at a thousand rpm and now you can actually see the the current that is going to be at that um, at that operating point well for what we're actually wanting to do we're just wanting to see what the torque of this motor would be at a higher rpm say 26 2700 rpm you're wanting to speed up your process so let's uncheck this move operating point and you'll notice that on this motor anything below this operating point or this nameplate data it's it's just the same it's a constant torque application just kind of a side note these 1ph8 motors are designed to replace um, replace your DC motors that have these like really high torque capabilities uh, at low RPM, these 1PH8 motors can do that too. So remember, this is an S1 curve, so it can do rated torque, so that 2873 all the way down to zero RPM and do that continuously. So these are hoist duty motors, but they are blower cool, just keep that in mind. So what we actually want to do is see what these. Um, what the available torque is out in this higher range so in what some people would call field weakening mode so if we just double click we will bring up a cursor and you can actually click and it will move that cursor now and so what we're displaying here is a different rpm what those the available torque is so remember you have two curves so you want to look at the torque curve so this customer is wanting something around 26 to 2700 rpm and so you're looking at about 21 2184 uh, pound inches of torque available on this motor up there around that 26 that 26 to 2700 rpm range so that is significantly less than than what what the maximum rating is but not too bad probably would do as long as you just understand hey you're not going to be able to break from this higher speed as quick for two reasons you don't have as much torque and you're going to have more inertia that you're going to have to break once you're um, or more energy that you're going to have to stop so you kind of just need to understand if you're over speeding a motor like this that, that that's what's going on so that's if you have a an actual full part number let's go back and take click back two times and then look at this body order designation because you can actually use this sizer tool to kind of select if you know how much torque you are wanting uh, how much you've done a calculation on your inertia maybe you've modeled your machine up into solidworks and you know how much torque you're going to need in order to get the cycle that you want uh, you can go into body order designation here and you can go and kind of select from a table so we're just going to look at the asynchronous asynchronous motors the forced ventilation ip55 is your standard stuff um, 
and then without a holding break and we're just going to click next and bring up this this kind of list here so these are the the entire list of the 1PH8 motors that that meet those specifications so by default um, not exactly sure what what these are sorted on probably alphabetically well uh, yeah I don't know I don't know what they're actually sorted on by default but if you know you have a specific torque that you're wanting you can go into this uh, M rated and then sort and it will sort all of the motors based on the amount of torque that you're needing so say that we needed we needed a a little bit more torque out out in that 2600 rpm say and so we want to find a motor that hopefully has the same maximum rating and maybe we can find one that has a little bit a little bit higher um, a little bit higher torque out at that 2600 rpm so we have this we have this motor here that has that 3130 now if we notice notice something here the horsepower ratings on these are quite different and that is because that horsepower is based off of the torque at this at the rated speed so kind of going in and thinking this may not be the type of motor that we're wanting because it's a lower rpm motor and i'll show you why we click next it's going to show us this torque curve which kind of looks the same as what we had before but if we go out here to that 2600 rpm again then we actually have less torque available to us out there because that that torque is dropping off a lot quicker so let's go back one and let's find this which is a higher horsepower rating because it's that same 2000 rpm motor and let's see what that torque curve looks like and up here at that 2600 rpm we're looking like we have over 3,000 pound in, or inch pounds there so that would be the better option for what we, what we were doing now that's one ph8 motor say we wanted to upsize this motor and we don't have the entire part number available to us yet so we if we continue to click next this is where we can actually select all of the different things that we want about this that fully fills out that part number so say we're wanting an incremental encoder we want to change the airflow direction on the blower and we want uh, let's see where's the bearing uh, yeah say we want a, a high-speed bearing there we go so there is our part number for that motor now so at this point we can click finish and if we were doing a, a continued workflow, uh, we could move on to the motor module and it would already have that selected just like we learned in Sizer before. But we're not going to do that right now. Um, we were just, I just wanted to show kind of where that motor data is in, in Sizer. So again, if you bring up a project, you can just, when you pick your motor, it gives you all of that motor data just by default when you're going through that motor. So. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, leave a comment for me down, uh, down below. And if you have any other suggestions for things, either about Sizer or questions about different features of Sizer, drop a comment below too, and I will try to get that the next time. Until then, though, y'all take it easy.